All right, everybody, call your mothers, call your fathers, call your wives, call your lovers, call your brothers and your sisters. We are here. We have reached the climax. It's the final of the winesellers.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023, live from Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington. Mink Naturat from Thailand will be taking on Hong Kong's very own An Yi. It's David Burney in the booth, and I'm also joined by Christian Youngers. I think we might have a sprinkling of guests. On Yi will be breaking off in this best of seven. No mid session interval. No mid session interval. And interesting because both these players do not have a blemish on their record. Went undefeated in the round robin and had a couple of whitewashes each in the quarters and semis. So. Unfortunately, there can only be one winner here, but I, it's fitting to be a great match. I think there's going to be a lot of high runs. These players definitely know how to do things when they get in amongst the balls. Got a great crowd here at Ox taking in the action this Sunday afternoon. We're glad that you've tuned in to the stream. Feel free to let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any comments or questions, if you want to cheer some support for Mink or Anyi, I'm pretty sure they'll feel it somehow through the Ethernet. I think this is going to just come down to maybe just a forced mistake. And momentum is going to carry big. You're looking at two former world champions, Mink of 2022, Anyi, a three-time world champion. Mink on the Pro Tour, and Anyi is battling tough to get back onto that Pro Tour. This might be the first opportunity here on you with a thin cut into the side pocket. Both players do have a sentry in this event. On you actually has a run of 1-2-1, one, one, as she did in the round robin. And yesterday on our televised match when on you was actually in the booth. Mink had a total of a 102. Yeah, 102 was yesterday, yep. Yeah, because he just broke down on the last red. So, and our good friends Jason and Diana Miller over at winesellers.com have promised if there is any sentries, any sentries, the player that is the orchestrator of that magical feat will get $500. And if one of these players can achieve perfection in the game of snooker as we like to call it the 147 the maximum break there will be five thousand dollars in their pocket yes indeed it's a pretty big prize shout out to wine sellers amazing stuff so i think probably in the early frames you know they'll probably be thinking of those high breaks mm -hmm. but i think as we get closer if it's tight they're really gonna tighten up and you might just see a bit more tactical play. Mm, good shot there. But it's on you in first after that little mistake, and I don't think it's going to be much. You know, you're not going to get many second chances as we've seen some other matches on the TV table where people have made some mistakes. They haven't got punished severely, but these two players both ranked highly on the women's side. Mink is ranked second in the world, and Anya is ranked third. So definitely the top two ranked players on the women's side. Rianne Evans obviously is the number one ranked woman in the world. However, that I think is going to be a little bit in jeopardy because this is a ranking event, and many points could be going to the winner, and we could see a new number one after this weekend's tournament. Thanks, Snicker155, my correction. I think it was a, a 107, not a 102. Much appreciated. And thanks for your kind words, Stephen Wong. He's wishing both players good luck. And both Christian and I, Stephen, are looking forward to 
coming down to your room for the U.S. Nationals. But right now, it's a final of the WineCellar.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship mm -hmm. of 2023. 30. We have referee Dave Daly mining the table. He's done a wonderful job all weekend long. Tough job being on your feet all day, but Dave hasn't complained at all. Come to done the job. Has done it efficiently. So sometimes the score might just be not right up to date as our good uh, technical director, Christian Youngers, might have just issues that sometimes he has to run through. And uh, our team is pretty small behind the scenes. So. Uh, Although we can see the score board from our direction. Yeah, we're good to go. Sorry about that. I think we're on pace. 37 break is the current break. We did talk about the, so the century prize as well. 500 for every century. Oh That's yes. going to be a pretty good one, I think. I mean, we have to see one century in this match. It's, it's got to be inevitable. These two players are too good. Definitely, I, th I think we are in for a treat here. I think those streaming numbers are just going to multiply exponentially just because the talent here is just undeniable. <laughs> so this could be an expensive match for the sponsor. Yes, it could. And I think we are going to get a couple of guests in the booth. We're going to get the two semifinalists that did not make it to this final. We're going to be hearing from Bex Kenna. And from Jamie Hunter pretty soon. I think uh, hopefully they'll each want to join. I know Jamie Hunter was in the booth earlier, but uh, we've yet to hear from Bex Kenna, so that should be fun. Yeah, ironically enough, last year's uh, wow. first and second. Well, look at that pot. <laughs> yeah, sorry to cut you off, Dave, but the greatness. Just counted onto that red perfectly and ended up the sliding on this blue. Amazing stuff. Yeah, so... Winner and runner-up, like you said. This year made it to the two semis against, you know, two players with just absolute class in their play. So not a surprise that these two are in the final necessarily, but still, they put up a fight. I know Mink had a couple of tough situations in the last bit of that, uh, last two frames in that match that we just saw before... Uh, Going to break against uh, Jamie Hunter. Nice red, good angle on the green to come off the cushion. And hopefully just cannon into the side of that cluster of reds and spread them open to continue the break. It's a perfect angle here. That was her luck. There's a red on into the middle. Could have been could have been more fortunate, but at least there is a pot on. So not a guaranteed end of break. tricky one but we have seen her drop this ball in I think on this she's going to screw back for black or pink maybe or you roll forward for the for the blue yeah drawing back just makes it that much more difficult yeah that angle's pretty steep so a nice uh, opening 55 break half century right there for Anyi however uh, didn't get to the snooker's required stage so we, don't, we do know that Mink is quite capable of making some uh, come-from-behind breaks. Yesterday in her quarterfinal match, she had a, quite a stellar break. She, I think she was down at about 40 or 50 points and was able to come back. It was kind of tough right there because we were watching that wonderful break and Anyi was getting close to a century on the other table. Lots of things were going, but 
Unfortunately, Anyi broke down, but Ming didn't and was able to uh, nip that frame and uh, keep her sheet clean. Safety looks like coming up. Roll up behind the yellow here. That's good. That's good. One. Good safety. Very nice. Now the question is, which red do you play for? She's looking at how potable this red maybe is. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything potable. I think she's really... Uh, she could just snooker. float down one cushion, maybe two, and float against this right most red. Yeah, just getting nestled up to it because it doesn't want to hit it too hard because then it might open up those other... Mm. Yeah, she always knew she was going to leave something on, possibly. That's why she came over and took a look. I think Mink would take the the red just left of the black. Yeah, I think this guy is going to be the target here. The red just below it, though, maybe is is closer, more in line, but just doesn't leave any position for any sort of black or pink situation. So this, at least she can play for a bulk color here, and it's kind of a two-way. But no two ways about it in the shot. Yeah, we're taking that red rather than the red that's closest to the cushion. The natural anger angle, as you say, does force her up into the bulk. So if she was to miss a difficult, sometimes blind shot, she at least would be up in the bulk area. So choice of reds. Yeah, nice. Choice of reds here. What do you think? Cannon into the other ones and play for the pink, or do you... Stun across enough and play for the black. It's a little, kind of a touchy shot depending on the angle here. It looks like she's playing the she could also just high of those three reds. Yeah. Oh yeah, she didn't even touch them at all. Definitely they're still both available to that top left corner pocket. Mm -hmm. So good opportunity for a steal here for Mink in frame one. It's going to come down to these two reds along the top cushion, I think. Ooh. Oh, wow. That feel felt a little quick to me. I don't know if it was lack of backswing or backstroke pause. Or the whole routine in general was just a little bit fast. But very rare. Missing the black off the spot like that for Mink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe just got ahead of herself. Maybe, unfortunately, we put the hex on her with the commentator curse. No, I think it was going to be tough regardless. The, like I said, I was saying that I think the story of this frame for Mink would have come down to these last two reds that are along the top cushion. I remember her, I was going to talk about earlier, she uh, she had the attempt of the high break of the tournament in that 107 that we recorded on this table, but uh, she ended up missing the pot. Um, along the top cushion, kind of where this red is down here um, the, in, in this frame so far. I think the red that she had was maybe a little bit closer, maybe in this area. But you saw her afterwards practicing that shot a few times uh, just because it was a pretty pretty big shot for the high break. Oh, and Anyi going offensive on this. Yeah, she needed that red or that brown to uh, put it into Snooker's required stage. So yeah. There's 51 on the table and 55 in it. Nice shot to go aggressive there because big payoff by getting your frame ball down. Uh oh. I think uh -oh. it's okay. Yeah, it's alright. How's the line here? Did she get the cover with the blue? I think on me can slide past that blue, and there is the potting angle on that red that's close to the top right corner pocket. Excellent pot. Well, the speed is a little bit in between, looks like. I don't think 
Mink will be coming back to the table, but she's just got to shake it off. It's only one frame. It's definitely capable of uh, getting one back sooner than later. Yeah, great pots here from Anyi. Went out strong in the start of this frame. and So far, I think in her semifinal match as well, her first frame was quite strong. I think she started off with something like a 40-some-odd break in the first few opportunities. Fifteen. Yanyi has a, a good pace around the table. You know, she's playing with purpose and stuff like that, not dragging her feet, so that's always good to see. Confidence is high. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's got to pick Dan Louie in the building. For those of you pool players out there, the man, the legend, former pool world champion Dan Louie's coming to check out the women play and great sport of snooker. We have more than, more than just two world champions in the house, huh? Just dropped that one in. Caught the cushion slightly on the way. She was look, kind of looking at it, and uh, the pace was good, though. half century in the 47 she's playing with purpose and being in the present moment so on you takes the first frame of this best of seven final of the winesellers.com u.s women's snooker open championship of 2003 and we'll be right back with frame two action Back here with frame two action of this final. Mink Nutcherot to break off. And we'll have a special guest coming into the booth once again. Last year's champion, unfortunately, has to uh, give away that title, but uh, nothing says everyone remembers the first, and you're the first name on that trophy. Jamie Hunter, how you doing, Jamie? I'm very good, thank you for having me again. Well, you're always welcome in the booth. So, you came out the wrong end of that semi-final a few hours ago. Do you still feel it? Did you, did you play well or just come again the tough? I was struggling. Um, yeah. But she was playing so much better than me. So, I was hmm. looking at it now, I was actually quite happy to keep it quite close from the way she's been playing the last couple of days. Um, but uh, she was a better player on the day and then sometimes when you're in a rut you need like a little bit of a rub of the green mm -hmm. and I think there was a few times I went into the pack off the blue and ended up on nothing and then you're just yeah. kind of sitting there just thinking well, you know maybe it's not my day it wasn't mm -hmm. yeah you just had a few unlucky breaks those last two frames were 
close. I know she really came out guns a blazing at the beginning, so that was tough. But uh, you know, anything can happen on these quicks match. You get the momentum, and it turns in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. I think as well when you're playing such good players, one shot can be the difference between winning or losing. Mm -hmm. And it was it was me making the mistake <laughs> on that one shot, so she could, <laughs> you know, when we were like level board with like one red left. Mm -hmm. With the colours on the spots, it's effectively whoever gets that red wins. Mm -hmm. And it was always Mink putting that red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lovely shot. She's playing so well here this weekend. Mm -hmm. She's definitely got a purpose in mind. Yeah, I, I, just, I just said to Karen that I'm actually quite, as a joke, I'm, I'm quite glad I lost that semi-final so she doesn't make a fool out of me <laughs> in the <laughs> final. <laughs> she's just not missing. No. I think still making the finals, if you did, it would be quite a feat as there's you know, many good players in this tournament. Some also good up-and-coming players. I think that they've seen... Uh, Leaps and bounds I've seen definitely on some of the local players. I don't know how you felt playing some of the local players here. Have you felt that they've got better because you were here last year? Ones I've seen definitely. There is quite a few people who, you know, I sat down with last year and, you know, they were asking for like tips, pointers, etc. Um, who you can definitely see that they've fell in love with the game of snooker from last year and started putting the time in and trying to improve obviously to like get on the level of these too mm -hmm. it takes a lot longer than what you think <laughs> that's true our good friend greg in the stream is asking how much for first place and it's thirty five hundred dollars not bad piece of change there i should have wanted this year instead of last year <laughs> <laughs> well there's always next year so probably the prize rate's going to even go higher for next year maybe hopefully Fingers crossed. <laughs> Have I baited my own self to put into that prize pot, I guess, to make it bigger? Get you all out. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be confused down in America. You know, us Canadians and the Brits, we have very colorful money. Their money's all green here. I came here without any money. <laughs> and you're leaving here with some. I hope so. <laughs> well, semi-finalists, you've got some uh, spending money. Are you going to be spending a little bit more time in Seattle after? So we've uh, got a few days before we go home. Yeah. Great. She's surprising herself with how well she's curing. Yeah. That she's just overdone that a little bit. Yeah, I've done this with both Mink and Onyi. They have been surprised the action that they're getting. Usually they would be in a spot, but they've sometimes overscrewed it by, you know, a couple of inches. It might not seem a lot in the whole screen of scenes, but in the game of Snuggers, a couple of inches is almost like a couple of miles if you're off. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This game's all about fractions, so. 20. Just a couple of millimetres can be the difference between an easy shot and, you know, one that you, it's a bit 50-50 on. Mm -hmm. That's our good friend Chuck in the Motor City of Detroit. You ever been to Detroit, Jamie? I have not been to Detroit. Okay. Well, it's a fun city. Lots of great musical history. That was where Motown was. A lot of electronic music, rock and roll. But Chuck is asking, do you play or are you a fan of any other Q sports? I'm not a fan of other Q sports. You know, obviously I dabble a little bit in pool because I think if you go from snooker to pool, pool feels really easy. Well, if you go the other way around, snooker's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I don't really follow any other Q sports. I'm a massive uh, football fan yeah. and soccer fan. Great to hear. Also great to see a real trailblazer of the women's game Allison Fisher is up on the stream saying hello hello Allison unfortunately I wasn't able to be down here 
in uh, Ox for their, uh, the exhibition and training seminar that you did. But I hear it was a great success, and uh, hopefully you can return again someday. Now see if it's uh, Mink's turn to put a sizable break. As both these players were undefeated as well with yourself getting into that semifinal. You had uh, whitewashes in the group stage, Jamie, as well as your quarterfinal. And then you came across the Mink train that was uh, running at full speed. Yeah, a little diddy train, but packs a big punch. <laughs> Sure, she's just so sweet and lovely off the table, but uh, I don't want to mess with her on the table. She's adorable. <laughs> you just want to, like, put her in your handbag and take her home. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Ask Bob is asking, Jamie, did you play in the Q school? No, I didn't play in the oh. Q school. Okay. I didn't feel ready. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've only been playing competitive snooker for two years, so. Two years. Long way to go. What's in your diet? I've been playing a little bit longer than that, and you pizza. just pizza. Okay. Pizza. pizza, pizza, pizza and pasta. Pizza and pasta. The PP. That's the key to uh, a good snooker. Uh, and lots of well. Pepsi Max. <laughs> Are you on that diet where you just eat things and drink things that start with the letter P? trying to think of some more <laughs> anything that's unhealthy <laughs> I'll eat it if it's green I'm not interested well, you're always keeping in good shape when you come to the room so <laughs> it, it, I was listening to um, when on you was talking yesterday about how she um, because of the way snicker she, she does fitness training mm -hmm. and I was like oh maybe that's why I'm not as good as I <laughs> <laughs> I've been in fitness training since I like, was forced to do it in physical education in school at like 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, so there's definitely a more mental game. You don't have to be in peak physical shape, shall we say. As we do remember, great Canadian player Bill Warbenek probably would uh, drink any beer he had a sight on. But I think it does help now a little bit just with your mental feeling. If you're f looking good and feeling healthy, it can help transpire into yeah, the I game. Yeah, I think they're definitely tied together. Mm -hmm. Like your mental health and your overall like fitness and well-being. But fitness is a word that scares me. <laughs> what if it started with the letter P? If it had pizza at the end of it... Like if someone said, run 10 miles and you can eat the best pizza in the world, you best believe I'm sprinting them 10 miles. <laughs> <laughs> I might hold you to that. Now you've scared me. <laughs> <laughs> you've said it to the world now, Jamie, so you might get some offers now. Hey, Chucky. Nice to hear from you. Easy one for Anyi. Seems with like these two players and yourself and Bex, both semifinals. Don't want to leave you for an easy starter. I think it's a catch twenty two because like the shot she's just played was like a, a a big shot. You know, you're going into the reds. You know, if you miss it, you're going to leave something. But you can't think like that because mm -hmm. you can't build breaks thinking, oh, what if I miss? Yeah. So obviously if you go for it full blooded you end up leaving a chance. Oh, uncharacteristic miss on that pink. So 
Minka's got a second chance. Jamie, are you playing off this blue to disrupt those three reds, that triangle just to the left of the pink spot? Normally, yes, but the way the cannons were going for me off the blue before, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, good to know, yeah. No, I think that when you're going into the, the pack of reds to disturb them, depends on the player. So, like John Higgins, for example, he always leaves it till the end. He takes every loose red first. Mm -hmm. Before, where I like doing it nice and early. Yeah, Stephen Hendry, Hendry liked to do it nice and early, so you're probably in pretty good company there. Yeah, but he was good. <laughs> oh, don't <laughs> knock yourself <laughs> short. You're last year's champion. Yeah, that's it. My name's on the middle of that trophy now. Forever. Never going away. Yeah. They say, you know, when some players get one four sevens, maximums at the crucible now, a great feat, but everyone always remembers the first, the so over. So they'll always remember it Jamie Hunter. I think it was the, the suit. The suit. Cliff Thorburn's suit, yeah. <laughs> now, you see, Mink's not playing the red down the rail, and I think it's because of the shot she played when she was on 100. Mm -hmm. And she missed it, and then she kept playing it after the frame had finished and then she played against me before and she missed the exact same shot down the rail and just seeing her kind of warm up a little bit she was practicing some of those shots just before this match commenced and she was having a bit of difficulty with that so that could be the one strike against her you know there's not much but, but, but that's one of the things that shot he, if she got it the first time you never think about it again, mm -hmm. but then because she's been paying a bit of attention to it, it sticks in your head, and then that's when you know you, your confidence takes like a little dent, and then that could make a big problem. So you look now where she is; the break's gonna be over mm -hmm. because she played a different red to avoid that shot. Where if she played that, the break might still be going on. We were laughing yeah. about it after the game. I said to her. Um, you're going to be practicing that shot like two hours a day for like the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah, once you have that little bit of doubt, it's so strange how our mind can just affect us so greatly on it. Absolutely, snooker's yeah. the same, you know, the, like, before I came here, my personal weakness is, like, playing off the cushion. Mm -hmm. So I'll do anything to avoid playing off the cushion. Okay. So then if I end up on the cushion... The, I shot that's really easy then when mm -hmm. you're going to get down to it you're like oh I'm not that good at these <laughs> and it just becomes ten you're making it ten times harder for yourself you're like your own worst enemy true you find out a lot of people that you know they come to the table and that you know maybe you're just playing friendly with a friend and they're like oh I hate this shot and already you put a negative feeling in there I think you have to come to the table and be like this is my favourite shot yeah so this the is the the lad who I practice with, he always laughs about it. If I'm bridging over a ball, like a Chinese snooker, mm -hmm. when I get down for it, he says, "You don't miss these," mm. and I never ever, like, I never ever miss them. But why couldn't I pick the different shot that I never ever miss, like one that actually matters? <laughs> Doesn't happen <laughs> once in a blue moon. It's just one of those things. If you, if when you're getting down for the shot, you tell yourself, like, you know, I don't miss these. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a Jamie Hunter special right there. <laughs> and, uh, Might miss it in a final when it matters. But <laughs> down on it so just got to be very precise doesn't want to put any unwanted siding on doesn't have to do much can just kind of roll through to be on the black it's a great picture there showing what you had to deal with and yeah just She could tag you in to take that shot for her next time. Tag team snooker. Yeah, send her an invoice for a practice lesson. <laughs> do you do any coaching? No. No. I, I I give like you know pointers to to mm -hmm. like people who I practice with or whatever, but I'm not qualified. Is this something you would be thinking about doing in the future with your career or? Got enough time. Fair enough. I think I was saying to one year before, you know, she plays snooker full time. Mm hmm. Where I have a full time job. Correct, yes. So it, to be competing with them at this level, knowing that I get less than half the time that they get mm -hmm. to practice. Yeah. I'm quite happy with. Yeah, Anya has the. Hong Kong government and talking with Ming, her club, the high-end snooker club in Bangkok, definitely is supportive of snooker, so she gets some backing through them. Not sure, do you have any backing at all, or are you just pretty much self-financed? It's Self-financed. That's impressive. So obviously working, it's like, 16. you know, eight, eight hours a day, and then having to go practice, it gets a bit much. Definitely. So it's just being like the same conversation as them to be one of the people who have won something. Mm -hmm. As well as them. Mm -hmm. That'll do. It's going to come out with a look. I think that's going to come back. Bad enough when uh, your opponent puts you in a snooker that sometimes you put yourself in one after that color ball that Anya had. Hopefully it's not too costly for her. The worst is when you pot a red and you end up stuck in the pack. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and then the other person just keeps putting you back and you're like, oh, this is on my top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the whole club took a big intake of oxygen then. <laughs> they did. So free ball has been awarded. Oh, well, Greg in the chat room is very proud of you, Jamie. So it is a balance when we are kind of amateurs. You know, we do it for the love. Not all of us are getting paid. But hopefully with more and more of these tournaments, more exposure for the women's game, we can get those prize rates up, a bit more sponsorship. So yeah, maybe you can take same, that. Same the other day. It's just about, you know, exposure and, and viewership. Mm-hmm. It just takes time, but obviously, especially us playing, we're not. For me personally, I'm not not in it for the money. If I was able to make money, I'd be doing a terrible, terrible job at it. I think you know, as much as snooker is kind of a, a niche sport, you know, it's. Not, I don't think it's ever going to really take over the big mainstream ones, say in North America, the football, the baseball, basketball, and hockey. Um, will it challenge? Um, football over in your country of England. It used to way back in the 80s when snooker just had its boom. I don't know if it ever will return to that, but I think a lot of people in and around the game are in it for the love of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. But it's like anything, it's like a generational thing, so like people who get into snooker, it's usually from like your parents or someone mm -hmm. that you know. It's never just you collide on TV this one time by accident. That's kind of how I 
found about it. Sure, I was with my father, but we were both watching it on the, the telly. Because, um, yeah, he wasn't a player that much. You know, there wasn't many clubs around at that time. So it must be different in Britain because it's such a rich history there and it's so very popular that you pretty much, you know, when you mention snooker to someone in England, they know what you're talking about as opposed to North America. They wonder if it's a dirty party trick or something. No, I think they think I'm speaking like Klingon. <laughs> able to steal this frame that would be pretty big she will need that pink over there so played a nice snooker there that's for sure I think the blue is in the way for the easy escape <laughs> We've got all the camera angles in the world. You see many angles there, but definitely the best view is definitely when you're down on the table. Yeah, but Ken Duckett, he wasn't there drawing the line on the table. <laughs> We've got Christian <laughs> Youngers to draw the lines. <laughs> Yeah, Rich, I do agree. Uh, snooker has kind of gone on a little decline, but I feel like it's it's coming back. The only just unfortunate part is we <laughs> get the so proud of <laughs> here he goes with this <laughs> illustrator. We get um, some of these developers and landlords are well, I could get a lot more money with a residential lodging than putting in a snooker hall takes up a bunch of space. I think it's more to do with um, getting young people into it. Mm -hmm. it do you need that turnover? Especially yeah. from me, like from, from like I won an under 25 tournament where I live mm -hmm. and then the year after I won it it hasn't been on since because mm. there's not enough people under 25 playing. Mm. Yeah. But I think if we do keep doing this I think as you were saying like exposure we have streams because then people can see it. Not everyone's going to pick up a cue, but someone might get inspired out there. Oh yeah. And hopefully, you know, some youngsters will be able to watch this as well. But I just think there's been a there's been a gap from when, from maybe between like the last four to five years, of when I played in the junior events, mm -hmm. to they kind of got left behind, and then now the big booms come where people have thought, oh my god, you know, we need to get more young kids in. Mm -hmm. But all these kids who are they're getting in are like. Eight, nine, ten. So it's still going to take a bit more time before yep. you then ponder through into the actual tournaments. Because they're still just novices. Very nice blue. It's Would coming. you go for the back double? Of course. Pool player. <laughs> what? You're going to cut it in? Oh, back double on the pink. Bring the white round the angles to get back on the black. Yeah, and I think uh, goes into the Left side mode. pocket where yeah. on you is. She went for it. Well. Well, it's it's a good job you're not a doctor with steady hands like that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie alluding to Christian, our <laughs> telestrator over there. Get him like maybe one of those little uh, computer pencils or something like that that he can draw on. He's kind of doing it freehorn with a mouse. Just close. At. Wow. Black ball frame.
See now, this is another thing about the mental side of snooker. If Onyi wins this frame, they Massive. might just mm -hmm. suck a bit of life out of Mink. True. Where if Onyi loses it, it won't have as much of an impact on her as it would if it was the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mink has kind of been ahead this whole frame, so just kind of losing on that final play. Black is can be devastating. Yeah, but then obviously being two frames behind as well from it. Mm -hmm. That's a good safety shot there by Mink. Knowledge by a little tap on the table by Anyi. come out. It's not the easiest shot in the world. Does have the ankle to try the pot into the top left pocket, come off a couple of cushions and return to bulk. Didn't want that. It's the last place she wanted to be. Is she fortunate that it's straight in? That Anya's going to have to put some bottom on this to just stick. What a steal there by Anya to take that second frame. Well, Jamie, it's been lots of fun. Pleasure. Always, always great seeing you. I think we're going to find uh, your fellow semi-finalist uh, Bex Kenna to come into the booth and we'll let you sit back, enjoy some pizza, oh, that's enjoy the final. And uh, thanks as always. Always great seeing you and definitely looking forward to seeing you again next year. As always, um, I shall be back. Uh, no, I am the Terminator. <laughs> maybe, hey, we need to work on a nickname for you, Jamie. So, the Terminator will be back. Absolutely. All right. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much, Jamie. Take Frame care. three coming up shortly. And welcome back, everybody, to this third frame. It's the final of the WineCellars.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023. And I'm joined greatly in the booth by last year's runner-up, a semi-final this year, Ox's very own sponsored, Rebecca Kenna. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Sounds good. All good. So you happy to be back in Seattle? Yeah. Yeah, I loved it here last year, so definitely was always going to come anywhere. Yeah, right. I love it. And things are going all right with, uh, you've got a shop over there in Yorkshire area, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. so um, I have someone running the shop, but yeah, the shop's going brilliant. Then I have my own practice area, not not too far from the shop, so I always uh, go in and check on it as well, getting my own practicing. 
Okay. And if you wouldn't mind telling the audience, where can they find your shop? Do you have any uh, website or anything like we that? We do have a website, thanks. Um, so my shop's called Q Sports Yorkshire, and our website is qsportsyorkshire.co.uk. Um, you can buy online or come and visit us in store. Try before you buy. Snooker and pull cues. Excellent. Is there many watching from England right now? Because it's quite late. True, we do well, have some here and there. Half past midnight back home. We do. I think she's probably still in the stream. She did say hello. The great Alison Fisher had tuned in. Oh, very nice. Should be a good final. Um, quite much of it because I've actually been shooting some pool out there. Um, My goodness. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Ongi's you obviously playing well. She played fantastic against me. I didn't really get much of a look in. Not really, yeah. Watching that match, you didn't make <coughs> many mistakes. She just capitalized on those few and yeah. ran away with it. Yeah, definitely. She was scoring brilliantly. So, yeah. Um, but to be fair, both of them have all the way through the tournament. So, um, I know we'd be in for a good final. Just had a black ball just then. Um, could have gone either way, but went over the bag for Ongi, so... A little history with you, Vex. How did you get into this great game of snooker? Um, just playing in the local pubs and club with my dad, really, growing mm -hmm. up. Um, so I used to visit my dad on weekends, and well, his thing to do was go to the pub, so <laughs> <laughs> he used to give me some money and put me on the pool table, and then he used to go to the snooker club and play. And then so when I was tall enough, I just I had to go on the big table, and then I've loved pool and snooker ever since. Um, but since getting into snooker more, obviously, I've gone away from pool totally, so, yeah, snooker's the one for me now. How has it been on the uh, product? <laughs> I think we've got a little product placement here, it looks like. What? Is this on camera now? Yeah, there it is, right there. So there's this is my very own Q Sports Yorkshire chalk buddy magnet for putting it in your pocket and stick your magnet um, to the chalk and then it holds the chalk outside rather than using a pouch or put it in your pocket. Mm. So yeah, we've sold a few over here, so it's good. So that could be your nickname now, Clean Pockets? If you want, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got to check with the players first if they well, like the nickname. Well, we've, we've called that um, the Chalk Buddy. Chalk Buddy, okay. So that's the Chalk Buddy. But now look, Mink's usually got quite a strong, strong head. But just looking at her body language, she doesn't seem too happy right now. But obviously, I'll keep digging in for them chances and play the right shots. Yeah, which which your game plan? It's obviously a race to four. It's a best of three. You're down to nothing. Your opponent's playing really well. What's going through your head as you're? You've just got to concentrate on your own game and scoring um, and don't get too hung up on like bad luck or bad run like that. That was a good long pot. She was unlucky to get the kiss and land on absolutely nothing. Um, so sometimes if it's not going your way, like the, the long pot she just went for, the, the black in the last frame, she could have potted it and it could have gone safe. But it didn't It didn't go in, it didn't go safe, it went over the hole. So you know, you've got to just um, not think about that, that bad luck too much and think it's going to be your turn at some point. So she did okay there, getting back safe. And then just be patient, wait for your chances and, and do your best, that's all you can do. So what was your game plan coming in to play on Yi earlier today? Um, well, all previously through the, the last games, I didn't really feel like I've been queuing as well as I have been doing. So I was just kind of hoping it had all come together. So, But I knew from from seeing um, on Yi scoring that I wasn't going to get loads of chances and she was going to take hers. So 
I was just kind of hoping it was all going to come together today, but I didn't actually get a lot of, a lot of chances anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm quite an attacking player, so I won't. If the balls are there to go for them, I will. But obviously it means you're going to get punished if uh, you miss, so... But yeah, I have no qualms with losing today because uh, yeah, Onyi was scoring really well. She's played really well all the way throughout the tournament, so I think both of these deserve to be in the final. Yeah, it's an important frame for Mink here. Hopefully she can uh, grab this frame because going down 3 nothing and a best of 7 really is a mountain to climb. But stranger things have happened on a snooker table. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, even when I was playing, when I, when I was at 3-0 down and 40 points down, all I, I'm thinking is, right, well, if I can get in and get back in and then get that frame to for Onyi to be 40 points ahead, 3-0 up, to then somehow get you know back into it, then all the momentum's with you, so the only, th the only way is up then, so... Mm -hmm. so you've, got to, you've got to remain positive all the way through and just dig in and keep believing yeah those sometimes are the dangerous moments because you're playing really with nothing to lose yeah and, and your arm can just relax and and then you get that mental head games going because yeah if you were to take that frame on yeah. you might be like I was that yeah. close to yeah. achieving victory exactly yeah now what are people going to think you know I'm down or up 3-1 then it's next 3-2 three, then we're at 3-3 three, yeah. three, and you put in a decider and exactly yeah and it's it's all about the mental game well, once you get to a certain level in this game it's who can like hold the head the best and play the right shots at the right time and have the right mentality all the way through the match and are we going to see you in the mixed doubles again this year? Uh, hopefully um, yeah. Depends what criteria they use for whoever's in it. There's a few different ways they could go about it because it's an invitational event. So, okay. who knows? Must own a billiard yeah. shop. Is that probably one of their criteria? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> 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 yeah, hopefully, but we'll see. It's definitely happening though. So, that's good to see. Yeah, that'll be good. That was really good for the women's game to get them all on the TV with the top pros. Ooh, just missed that one. It's going to be pretty safe though. Oh. Did you get many um, little girls back in England uh, come up to you and really are inspired by what you're doing? Um, you see, there's not many young girls picking up cues, to be honest. We need to get okay. more mm. get more doing it. So Hopefully there is there's some out there and seeing us all online and seeing our events and wanting to go give it a go but but really it's more it's more down to the parents really get get your girls going down to the club with you and things like that because yeah i think the culture is starting to change where these snooker rooms are a lot more family oriented you know that stigma that everyone hears about like smoky room shady characters darkness yeah, and all yeah, that stuff club, club and you don't really take your little girl to the to the pub club well, you did in the 90s, but not, <laughs> not now. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, if we can see it more of as a, a leisure activity. So, so some clubs are doing like Saturday coaching groups for getting the children involved. So, yeah, it's, it's getting better. Yeah, it seems like Onyi just has all facets working. One thing I noticed early on in this tournament scene, uh, both Onyi and Mink on separate round robin matches, that Onyi just seemed like she had a little bit of the edge with the long pots. Yeah. Yeah, she got the pace of the table really well. 
I thought it was playing a little bit slow earlier, but she seemed to have the pace of it straight away. Hmm. As long as you've got the angle here, just pop that middle red and flick that over red to get straight in, um, in and amongst the black. Nope. This red is going for the yellow pocket. Yeah, with an element of safety going up. Yeah, and you didn't miss much against me, but when she did, she, I didn't really get much left, did I? <laughs> it's just how it, how it runs sometimes. And how is it playing on the Pro Tour? Oh, it's good. It's a hard challenge, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though I've got my own star table and it's heated and new cloth, it's still like no match for the TV tables. They're just lightning. Mm. So it's taken a while to get used to just the just the table, as well as the fact that you're playing against a, a top pro or you know someone who can not give you many chances and plays all the right shots. So yeah, it's hard work. Uh, but it's good, I'm learning learning from it and thankful for the opportunity to be able to try play this sport full time. Oh, oh, right behind the yellow again, almost. Mm -hmm. It's getting a little bit scrappy with where the black is, but some reds on the cush. Oh, on the rail, as you say. <laughs> well, I think we had this discussion last year, maybe, that there is a vocabulary for snooker and then there's a vocabulary for pool. All right. And I think maybe... You so know, even in s when you're talking about snooker, you'd still say the cushion? I would say the cushion, yeah. I would say a double. Yeah. I would say a plant. Yeah, all right. So you do talk snooker, so talk. Uh, and I think uh, part of us are just to, as well, educate uh, the pool player. Just when they start, say, a plant, they might be like, what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, are they going gardening? Yeah. But to uh, tell them that it is a combination or a double being a bank shot. Yeah. So. Something got a bit lucky there. Nearly left the red over, but it's left a little bit safe. Mm -hmm. To drag that in as well and trust the table. Got to be uh, confident to, to have a go at that. say there's a lot of open reds so you got to really make a good dent but yeah just dropping it in there you've got to, got to trust that uh, it's not going to wobble sometimes the white can just when you're going along the diagonal the white can just turn a little bit before it gets to the blue mm -hmm. So it's a nice starter for Mink. Can she get in and score some points here with the open reds?
So, Bex, are you picking away these open reds, or <coughs> wanting to go into maybe some of those reds, develop them sooner than later, or what do you? What's your feeling in the setup of this table right yeah, now? Yeah, take all the easy ones first. Mm -hmm. Get your points up. Get get yourself in, and wait for a good chance to to maybe go into them. Because you want you want the table time as well, and. You want to feel like you've you've been on the table a while, and and then you can get more confidence to then maybe leave an angle on a high pink, and then go down into them. But yeah, definitely take, take at least these two reds on the right hand side. Oh, she tried to go into them then. See that? That would have been resorting to luck. She wouldn't have really had any. She didn't get the black out to put it in, I don't think. Yeah, I think there would have just gone to another pink to middle, then that last red, and yeah, maybe gone, in, gone into one after that. But I think that, that pocket must be playing quite tight, because I don't know if you've seen, but the mink had a few goes at that that red down the cushion um, that she, she missed to get like a 142 clearance. She tried it and tried it, it's just mm -hmm. a hard one down that rail, so maybe that's just a really tight pocket. This is a hard cut back, being so close to the cushion. but she's going to get onto a red. Hmm. Not easy. I'm glad these two made it here to this event as well because it's good to get the top players coming, supporting all the the events. Yeah. And they've had a couple of centuries, so yeah, good good scoring as well. True, it's... Uh, yeah, really yeah. good good quality. Kudos to all of you that have travelled over. I know it's a, a fair distance. Um, to part with uh, lodging in North America. It's not as cheap as I've heard in the mm. other places you go. Talking to Matt Hurd, he was telling me that the English England, the hotel rooms aren't too bad, and as yeah. well as Thailand. Especially when you don't have a, a huge amount of backing and stuff yeah. like that. You almost have to make this into kind of a work vacation, it kind of seems like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, I have a, a couple of sponsors for the women's tour. It's actually not Ox Billiards, they're, like, they're my pro tour sponsors, but the, my women's tour sponsors is um, Handmade by Joe. Okay. And they do like embroidery and custom custom garments, things like that. Very um, nice. So they're sponsoring me for this season. So they've helped helped me get over here. So yeah, it wasn't, wasn't cheap with the flights and accommodation. And uh, my other sponsor is uh, my sister's mortgage company. Okay. Um, Elevate Financial Services, so anyone wants any mortgages or bridging loans, things like that. Elevate Financial Services. Ooh. That's the pocket. Yeah, could be starting to get into the <laughs> red. I mean, they are hard shots along the diagonal to stun it in off the side cushion. She played the white pretty nice. She left on Yin with a chance. Looks like she's going to can in the black. Mm, just the pink go to the I think it does. Just looking at our vantage point, we're kind of just done. It's totally different in. Oh, well, yeah, I can see in real life, yeah, it totally does. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows yeah, in an artificial world, but yeah. in real life it always goes. <laughs> mm. Not into a uh, much harder. 
especially going into this pocket. Okay, yeah, because you're digging down as well with top spin. You've got to make sure you hit absolute centre. And she could have played it a touch harder to get better on the red to middle, but... Easier then. Yes, yeah, from our vantage point in the booth, seeing it in real life, that pink was definitely onto the middle, and looking at the TV cameras, there was a bit of space there, so she didn't really have to worry too much about the push shot. So still anybody's frame though, with close points and some safe reds. So she was hoping to leave an angle on the pink to go into him. Looks like she has done this. It's an important frame for Mink. Obviously in this best of seven. So I want to be going down 3 nothing. As they say, you to really in the match until you get that first frame on the board. It's perfect. It's nice. That'll give us some confidence. So when you're looking for a bit of luck, if you don't get it and you haven't had any through the match, you think, oh, it's not my day. <laughs> but when you do, when you get a nice, a nice kiss like that to leave you on another red and black. The mink's really good in this, this type of area. Really good technique. Lovely cue action. She's got a high black. She doesn't seem happy with that, but well, looks like a high black. Is that too straight? Oh yeah, just a slight angle. Might not be enough to do anything with those reds. force a stone screw into him but it could jeopardise the black so Not for this red which looks like a very hard cut. Mm. Very thin. Yeah so Ongi played a lovely shot like this earlier where she just dragged it in. We've got to really trust the table to stay true because she wants an angle off the pink to go back down again. Just a little off straight. Yeah, I think a little too straight again. So sometimes when you just don't have that angle, it's best to just take the pink, play safe, don't jeopardise. Try to do anything special. 
Mm, like that. Why did we need to screw to the cushion? Mm hmm. Could have just had a nice stunning drop in. Took the six points and then played a good safety. Yeah, I feel that's a good mantra yeah. to have there when you just. You're on a color and you look at the reds, and it's pretty much. Yeah, you know you can't no get on them, you know you can't do anything. You Put all your focus in that color so yeah. at least you can get the points, and then you're still at the table, have the control, and then yeah. you can control your own destiny by. Yeah, I always say it's, it's important to get the color with the reds. No point going up in ones. There you go, everybody. Good food for thought there <laughs> from Duck Scanna. Do you do coaching? I do do coaching, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. doing coaching full time as well as running my shop and until I got the Pro Tour card. That's a good pot. Yes, yeah, so I'll say that to, to your beginner levels as well is when you're in a match, in the league matches, just I get get a colour once you get a red and then you can play safe but but never jeopardise that colour to to try get onto a red because you're jeopardising seven points to get onto one point so if it's if it's not on just take the seven and play safe this could be nice Ooh. Oh, that could be perfect, or it could be a millimetre out. Didn't hear no clapping, so mm -hmm. I'd have clapped if that's plum. Sometimes it's a, a bit tough uh, in North America, as they're not so used to the game, they don't know. Sometimes... There is quite a few people watching, but yeah, you just don't know. Uh, don't look like it goes. She's she's playing a little safety. The thing is, if she just nestles up, then Mink's got the upper hand because she can play into bulk. Mm -hmm. So I kind of need to get up into bulk, but without sending the red up as well. So yeah, that's a good shot. You don't want to lose the safety advantage by just rolling up. So not a lot of points in it again. <coughs> well, we've got uh, 13 minutes. Mink on top, 36 to 23. And there's 59 on the table. So still no clear victor in this rather important third frame of this final of the WineCellars.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship 2023. Yeah, so you've got some good sponsors again. They're all backed over here. I'd love to have a wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have any cellar. <laughs> I don't have a cellar in my house. True, they've been showing a little bit of advertising in it, uh, throughout the broadcast. It has definitely made me a little bit thirsty. Mm. I like a red wine. Sparkling, right? Well, I had sparkling over <laughs> here with my meal, but um, in general, I just like a normal red. It's probably the longest frame of the match so far. Mm hmm. First, who went rather swiftly. Yeah. Don't know, you scored well in the first frame as well. That's good, good shot. Let's play that with a bit of side so she avoided going into that over red. Ooh, and look, it's going off though. True. And yeah, just going up that table, that nap might have just got a hold of it and just pushed it to the left a little bit. So these kind of shots here, the likes of Mink and Oni and myself practice, practice knocking these in and stunning round. Either red to either side. How long would you practice in a day? What's a what's a good practice session for Bex? Uh, if I'm just doing solo practice, I'll probably try to get four hours in. Um, 
Yeah, between 10 and 4 I normally do, so having breaks as well, so. Mm-hmm. And then calling in at my shop and seeing how it's <laughs> doing over there. And that's a nice pot. Reaching over as well. Yeah, luckily. Yes, yeah, nice. Oh, I was going to say the natural angle, she should be okay, but she can count herself a bit unlucky there. Eight. So this is where you need to have a strong mental game because she's done a good long pot there and lucky to get bad cannon to be stretched on a high black and then trying to drop it in to give it every chance and then just landing where she didn't want to land. So now she's got to be patient and get a good safety in. Coming off two cushions. Hopefully in behind the yellow. Yep, cover on the ground. Yeah, best of seven in professional snooker standard is rather a short match, but I think that's uh, in these matches, sometimes if a player has the luck at the beginning, it should at some point switch over to the other. Yeah, if, if it is usually always 50-50, sometimes it can seem more one way or the other, depending on the situation, but but you really don't want to be resorting to luck and thinking about luck at all time when you're playing, because if, if, if it feels like you're only getting bad luck, it can make you very negative, and you don't want to be negative out there, you want to be really positive. Sure, and at times luck will run out, yeah. but the proper technique stays with, ever, stays with you forever. Yeah. The next tournament for you women is, is it in Leeds, or what's the next tournament on the calendar for the WWS? Yeah, September Leeds, yeah, the UK Championships in Leeds, okay. 24th, 25th September. Nice and local for me, that's a 40 minute drive, <laughs> rather than <laughs> a four and a half hour drive to a Heathrow Airport, followed by a 10 hour flight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that'll be much nicer for me. Um, but the day after that, I've actually got the... British Open match against Sean Murphy. Okay. So if I get a good good run in the UK so I can go into that confident. Yeah, last year you actually were playing in a qualifier and then you pretty much have to jump off the pla on the plane right after that qualifier and get here. Yeah, I think yeah. that was the British Open qualifiers last year. Okay. And I'd, I'd drawn Ryan Day in the first round who beat me 4-1 and mm -hmm. then he went and won that tournament. <laughs> And, and now I've got uh, Sean Murphy in the British Open who's just won the Championship League and everything else <laughs> recently. Yeah, so as soon as Mink gets back to Sheffield after this event, the British Open qualifiers on the Pro Tour are, are hey. now. So I would have been playing in that if I hadn't have drawn Sean Murphy. So when you draw one of the pros in the top eight, you have to play them at the venue. Okay. So I'm not playing him till it's 26 of September, whereas Mink's got a qualifier match, I think, in a few days. Hmm, I think Andy can knock this one in. I think you're in so well today with the long pots. She's 
just off straight on the pink it's going to go back on its spot so some people would be trying to launch this in and swing it back down for the red but you don't need to, you just need to drop it in and then play a safety you can stun him behind the black you could even almost go for the cut and it'll probably go back across its somewhere near the black anyway and get a safe white yeah, that's glued to the cushion Here is always hit cushion and object ball at the same time yep, so that was a good effort on that that's a good on shot oh, a nice flick on the brown to get the snooker so that's kind of what Mink could have done earlier just taking the pink and then playing safe no heroics mm -hmm. so 56 to 30, so 26 points in it, and there's 35 on the table. Who is kind of relatively safe. Oh, that's a nice hit. It's coming back down. She needed a quarter ball contact there to put some distance between the object ball and the cue ball. Still anybody's frame, though. Another nice shot from Onyi. Perfect. Yeah, that's a round of applause from the crowd. Yeah, yeah it'd be really devastating to Mink if uh, this frame slips away. So. Yeah, I think she'll still, you know, fancy that she could win, but obviously it'd be an uphill struggle. But Mink's generally quite confident and always believes in her capabilities but this was such a good shot from on you that it, the, the reds you know very close to the center of the table so it's not near a cushion very hard to hit off two. Oh, that was so close as well are you putting her back backs so are you taking on that long pot see i think on you should should go for that yeah. But it depends if you if you again if you're feeling confident then you'd fancy Mink maybe it will miss it again and then leave you in a better chance or hit it too thick and leave you it. Um, and then if you're feeling more negative you might be thinking, Oh well she you know, she could probably get it safe here. Or, you know, I don't fancy the long pot. So it's all about how you mentally approach the game. So that's gone pretty safe. That's the, that's the chance you take sometimes. You can either put it in your own hands and go for it or put it into the hands of luck. Mm, a little bit too thin. Okay. Maybe something that we can uh, add to the experience here is get those little transistor radios for the audience and then they can uh, yeah. listen oh. into your uh, great commentary Bex, <laughs> when you're calling these wonderful shots and they can uh, applaud accordingly as we're still trying to educate the great American crowds that we get here. It's a newer sport to them as much as it's been around for over 150 years yeah. in the world. but. So have we had any claps when it's been free and ball? <laughs> or have we uh, forgot to do that? I guess the one, the, the one issue is we only have one scoreboard, whereas obviously the pro events that you yeah. play in, there's uh, scores all over the place that you can't miss what's happening.
becoming a swerveless. Good shot. Good full ball contact then, so let's put distance between. Even though Minx 22 points ahead, it is still anybody's frame really because all the, the balls are open. for the pot there. Not an easy shot off the cushion. Head's still really nice there. both these players as well as yourself you know there's not a lot of movement it's just that back arm that's yeah on a pivot swinging back and forth yeah if it, this is a good angle from the side on so both on Yi and mink have lovely techniques with the q action just going back and then into that set position and a finish so i should relax a bit now because this is this her frame ball. I'll clap for him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need an applause button or something <laughs> like that where sitcoms have. <laughs> Actually, I'll just screw that a bit. It's always a polite audience, that's for sure, at snooker events. Uh, not to diminish the pool side, but sometimes it can be quite uh, boisterous. Rowdy. Rowdy. Good Just watching point. the Moscone Cup last year and down in Vegas. There was a lot of hooting and hollering. Kind of maybe on lines of the shootout, but that's not traditional snooker. Mm. How do you find the shootout? Are you a fan of it? Or yeah, it's good. Yeah, I like love it. It's fun, it's different. Gets new audiences, I think. And yeah, it's exciting. Anybody's frame. And you don't, you don't get a chance to think, so that's sometimes a good thing when you're out there. <laughs> sea ball, pot ball. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounds like a Dr. Zeus book. <laughs> I was just playing pool out there with, uh, I think he said his name was Steve. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just potting him, didn't know the cue balls going or anything. And that's a concession there, so Mink is crawling back. She trails 2 1. She's going to take a little comfort break and we'll step aside for a few short moments. Well, Bex, thanks very much for coming into the booth. Thank you very much for having uh, me in. We wish you uh, safe travels all the way back to uh, the lovely Isle of England. Thank you. And what's that store again? Let our viewers know. Q Sports Yorkshire. All right. The website is qsportsyorkshire.co.uk. And we'll see you guys next year, hopefully. Sounds great. And maybe we'll see you in Sheffield in the spring. Oh, yeah, you will. Excellent. Definitely. Thanks a lot, Bex. Cheers. Take care. See all you. the best.
And we're back here with frame four action. Frame four action of this winesellers.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship 2023. Good to see that Mink can put on a, a frame on the board, so it's kind of game on now. Both players have a frame there, so we'll see how Anyi rebounds after kind of a marathon of a frame. Really appreciate Bex Kenna coming in. Spending some time kind of sharing her story as well and uh, adding a little nice color commentary, which was nice to see. Bex, the player, definitely knows what shots should be taken and what should be avoided. So we appreciate her insight. Hope you enjoyed her uh, contribution to the broadcast. Safety shot there is. A red near that left corner. Is this going to be a, a tempter for on you to take on? Yeah, I think th I think she goes for this one. Oh, just overcut it. Maybe the first few mistakes have been seen from on you. A little, mm -hmm. a little bit of a switch up of pace after that last frame. Yeah, it definitely would have been something if Anyi was to nip that frame. That would have put her up 3 nothing and still not have a frame against her. But I mean, she got off to about as fast of a start as you can get in this final after the two two frames. Especially the first frame was pretty one-sided. Mm -hmm. A half century and then a 47 break by Anyi. In the left edge of this red above the black. Is that, I think, the line she was checking? It's got kind of a channel. Goes right along these balls. To maybe escape up table. Opting to choose a different one. I think thinning the right of the red just left of the pack. That also works. It's very common, I think, uh, at this point too, when the players start to uh, they start to block off sort of these balls right here by just getting to the left side of this line on their, on their safety play. That way, when the cue ball is there, they can't uh, really escape off of the easy side since the right half of the table is very wide open. You see them starting to put a lot more, in this case, left spin to get the cue ball to go two rails around and end up in the top left corner of the table. As you see from the past three or four safeties, both players have kind of tried to do the same thing. side of this red that's close to the top left corner pocket. Length isn't quite there. It's going to run a bit long because there is that open red on the right side. I think it's another difference you start to notice between the pros when they're when they got the feel, feel of the table very, very often they're getting all the way up tight to the bolt cushion, if not within a few balls length or, or right on it, but uh, when they start to come up short and end up amongst like the bulk line or so, amongst the colors, it's a little bit more indicative of maybe not getting the right speed or angle. Wow. That's a good opener. That was an all-or-nothing pot, too. Not, no shot to nothing there. I 
think actually she can get the black yeah. back on its spot. I think it will go to both top corner pockets. But it looks like now uh, this pink will pass the red. Pink might be going to the black spot though too, right? Yeah, we'll see where referee uh, Daly Seven. spots it, and you are correct, Christian. Let's go on to the pink spots as when a color ball is pocketed and their spot is covered, it goes to the highest valued that is open. So in that case, the black spots. And if all the spots are covered, then it will go back as close as it can to its original spot on a line with the bulk cushion. Sometimes those can be quite tricky, tricky for the referee, especially when uh, the pink goes down and the pink and black and all the other spots are covered and there's a lot of reds open up at around the pink spot. He has to really kind of work his magic to get in there and spot the ball. 15. Leftmost red. Come up, probably played for the blue. It looks like the black did spot on the brown spot way up table. So, might even be another option depending on how far she goes. Yep, two cushions toward the green or black, it looks like. Or even came a little too far, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, a little swivel of the hips on that. Frustration slightly. Brown is on, but the problem with the brown is you're going to be spotting and tying up the black. Don't really want to do that. There is always this long blue. But uh, she likes the brown for sure. That's why I was alluding to that rule here is uh, Dave Daly with the steadiest hand in the room. I'm sure that that round ball is exactly where it needs to be respotted. But as you said, Christian, that is going to tie up the black and tie up the brown. Longer do either of those balls go in either corner or middle pocket. But it looks like she's going to have to just play with the blue. Maybe deal with that later. Yeah, pink's pink. not too bad. Yeah. Got a decent angle. Would have been nice to be a little bit higher. I wonder if she's going to run in or just kind of pick off these uh, open reds. Mm, decided to stun in and look at this pace. Don't think you could have placed that better with your hand. No. That's a, a fantastic shot there. Probably a, a good idea just to clean up these reds because the pink will go back onto that black spot. So it's nice to see that on yeast or Mink, I mean, is finding some form in this final. I don't think anybody in the room really wanted a whitewash. They wanted to see a, a good battle. Hopefully we can maybe get down to the decider, but we'll see. Time will tell. Oh, sorry about that. Red that's on the bottom of the pack there will go into the top right corner. So I think she's going to just maybe draw back for that one first. I 
Yeah, definitely enough angle to run into these. Cut the back end. Mm -hmm. Forty. And as we were alluding to last frame with Bex, just make sure of that colored ball. That could be six valuable points as the frame grows longer. And Mink is still at the table and able to put her cue ball where she wants to. Would have been actually really nice, I think, if she had gotten uh, a red and come up all the way ta up that part of the table because uh, the way the black and brown sit, it's kind of a backboard safety if you can get behind it. Just roll up and tap the black, open up the balls, and you guarantee being frozen. Kind of like a little bit of a Newton's ball effect, you know? Transfer of energy, and the white enters the cluster, and the brown exits the cluster. Well, look at this. A nice long red by On Yi. Same kind of shot. Is she going to go into him? I don't think she needs to. She could draw back because that red on the bottom is open as well. Just in the top of that pack on the left side, there's an open red there. Mm -hmm. I think the pink spot is still covered. Yeah, she's definitely so taking that. This should come back to the black spot. Seven. Still plenty of reds. Pretty good at that little drag shot. I noticed that a few times. Almost looks like what you would call like a D cell, but it kind of just still gets through the ball and the backspin just slows it down. What it does is it helps guarantee that line is nice and straight off of the cue, as opposed to when you just kind of roll it and tap the ball. It can get a little weird if you don't hit quite center. Yeah, great speed. Potential for a steal here. Yeah, it's definitely filling up here in Ox. Spectators. Bubble. Spectators are coming in and if you are in the Seattle area, there is still time. It's 2-1. It's a best of seven. So if you're in the Seattle area, jump on down to see us at Ox Billiards. 1432 Broadway in the Capitol Hill area. Admission is free. Drinks are cold. The snacks are aplenty. We'd love to see you come down. This has been a, a great match. Two really heavyweights of the women's circuit. Second and third rank players. Yeah, you don't really get much better of a matchup uh, unless you include the number one, I guess. Mm, just oh, missed yeah. the bunch. Same kind of shot from earlier as uh, as Mink. I'm not sure if it's the slickness of the cloth. They are playing a super fine as opposed to number ten, so balls sliding a lot more before they really catch the spin. So maybe less reactive than the one they're used to on the tour. But still. Oh, well, maybe she's got cover with that brown and black. Definitely does. Mm -hmm. well, let's put the pressure on Mink to make a good safety because that red is definitely a sitter on the top right corner. Double this red on the left cushion, come back up into bulk. Oh no, just went for that shot. Incredible. Whoa.
the one thing that Mink has definitely been able to pull out is the tough shot in the toughest of moments. Kind of brings you back to that brown down to the cushion. It was anyone's frame in that one. She was playing Jamie Hunter earlier, and she took on that brown and wobbled it and dropped it into the pocket. Talk about shots, though. That red at distance down the rail. In this moment, when you have a red over the pocket, incredible. Yeah, she's really turning around her uh, long body, and I thought that was going to be one issue that she might have, but she's been able to change that. There's no way she's missing this green also after that. She's going to hit the gap right here. If not, the plant is on. Ooh, she might have gone. Oh, that's a bit difficult. Oh, this this top right corner pocket, I think she wants to take it in a back alley and rough it up a little bit. Has not been kind to Mink in this match. So just kind of eyeing the plant right there. The story of the tournament for her has been this corner pocket, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, based on this look, worst, absolute worst case, you can definitely hit the red cushion first to plant it onto the other red. It's a little bit dicier that way, but. Is there a little gap enough with that red that's just to the blow, the right of the pink? And this red that's closest to her cue ball, can she slide? No, I don't think so. No, taking the other one. Just thought maybe she might be able to slide through there. She goes cushion first, it looks like. Oh, she clipped the first red. That was a mistake there, I think. It's tight to the bolt cushion, but pretty sure she wanted to hit that second red. Not the one closest to the cue ball, and then hit it cushion first to the other one. Because the plant was on in that way. Seems like this frame is going to get pretty close, so it might have to come down to this clustered brown and black. pace to hold that ball slow rolling it against the nap or downhill awfully tricky yeah, I think spot is still covered you can in these balls now you play for the red up table. I think you just come uh, stun this pink into the side because you got that bottom red of the two into the top left corner pocket. I don't know. I think she needed to can um, them. But now but the pink is going to come back on its spot. Yeah, no luck. 13. Don't think she'll take the plant on. But probably safety here behind the black brown cluster it looks like could also take this pot on but probably too aggressive unless she doesn't have full ball oh, she only has about a half ball contact don't know if she goes she definitely doesn't go rail first so I think it's a bit too far away from the cushion so might be going offensive actually Nope, just a separation safety. Nice shot. of Mink Nutrat. Oh. 
both players struggling with that corner pocket. So yeah, the last two frames haven't been as swiftly flowing as the first two. Thin cut from Mink into that elusive corner pocket. Uh, just lucked into play safe. for the double. Because in that way you always get separation and you don't leave your cue ball down by the rest of the reds. And now that they're kind of clustered up, you're really only playing to hide behind some other balls from only one target and not multiple targets. This might be the full ball snooker on all of them. True, and there really isn't a, a safe way to come back. Like sometimes, yeah, hitting off the cushion and coming into a red is fine, but unfortunately, that red that is close to the cushion, if she was to come off the cushion, is just going to take all the momentum out of the cue ball and leave it there. And unfortunately, those two reds there are just well, can happily to find the bottom of a pocket. Can you get to the edge of this safe here, maybe? It's, it's a little tight. She can get to the edge of that red. Might be able to do it. Escape. Yep, just barely caught the left edge. Watch the cue oh ball, right. though. Oh. <laughs> she gives a little smile. Maybe a little uh, pray up to the heavens there, thanking someone, something. Maybe the change of wind. Uh, winds have changed, though. The uh, change in the rolls from the past. You know, early on, on you getting a, maybe a couple more friendly bounces and Mink not getting very good looks, but now it seems like it might have shifted. As th the luck always does, comes back to center. But a great safety here from on Yi. Yeah, it is a game of momentum. On Yi looked very strong in the beginning was rather a quite a, a steal at the end. It was a black ball frame in the second one, so it kind of really could have gone either way. Mink did have a long pot on, gave it all the hope in the world, and was just really unlucky, actually, that the black ball finished off right over top of the pocket for an easy frame victory for Anyi in frame two. And Mink has led the third frame, and Fought off uh, a charge by Anyi late. And he's also leading this one. Anyi with the initiative, though, so far, having better opportunities getting separation, but I think she's left a chance here. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is a getting into Mark Selby's mode. Feels like Yeah, we knew it was going to probably be a bit free flowing at the beginning of the match. 
you know, best of seven can kind of chance your arm a little bit more in the early stages, but as we get uh, going, it's going to tighten up. And if Mink is to take this frame, it could get really tight for the final push because then it will be a best of three. Yeah, but wouldn't we love to see that? A decider between these two? U.S. Open, second annual? My goodness. We're not there yet, though. Mink has to get this frame. Or on you. Still, anyone's... Oh! Mink is going to put on Yi back in. Characteristic. Just wants to be so thin. He's be just it. So. Both players and referee deliberating over where. daily just checking with both players to see if they're in an agreement and they are so play on it's gonna get covered for this red this is the tough one I think the pot is on depending on how line looks, is it a shot to nothing? I'm not sure. Can she, can she manage to not get it into the brown and green with enough screw back? Snooker 155, 5 a.m. decider. Oh, trying to roll up on the black here. A little bit short. But just offline. Now I think on you with the initiative once again. Able to create separation by thinning off of this red. Gonna want that one back. Even though it's tight. Yeah. It's close to that top cushion. Not tight on it, but yeah, I think so. I think she would have wanted had that shot again. Just left an opening for Mink. Definitely a long pot. The full 11 feet, 11 inches. Wow. Yeah, it opens up the reds pretty naturally, too. Oh, beautifully on the black. Both reds are in the open. So I think the first real few mistakes here from Anyi in this match. We've created an opportunity for Mink. Again, the key, <laughs> key ball's just kind of zipping off of their cue. Almost got too much into that one.
26 in it. 35. Mink just having a look at the scoreboard. She needs one more color. That's correct for frame ball, right? Mm -hmm. Red and color will do it. And go on the brown to get behind the yellow. And that's going to be frame ball there. Do we hear an applause in the crowd? <laughs> yeah. It is, as I was alluding to Bex, it's tough with the one... Uh, uh, scoreboard it's tough for all people to see and slowly and slowly I think we're getting the education level up about the American snooker crowd mm -hmm. so yeah this should be uh, a 2-2 match with uh, three frames to go yeah, and I think Mink has woken up for her from her uh, post lunch slump that she might have had maybe in the first frame Mm -hmm. And you just see sheer determination in the heart. Thank you for those nice comments, Miss Sutherland. She did a great job a few years ago at the Alberta Open when we were out in Red Deer. Uh, the payouts are it's thirty five hundred for the winner, two thousand two hundred and fifty for second place. I think thousand dollars for the semi-final oh. this and there might be another prize for the quarterfinals maybe 500 but also very lucrative there's a hundred dollar prize for the high break which on Yi has right now at one two one however in this final if there are any centuries our good friends at winesellers.com will pay five hundred dollars for a century in the final to any player that does it and if there is a maximum, we only have three frames. I'm uh, not going to bet we're going to see it, but, you know, stranger things have happened. We have seen tournaments won on a maximum. Winesellers.com will pay $5,000 for that moment of perfection. But we'll just step aside for a few short moments and come back with frame five. Three frames to go. Who will be this year's winner?
and welcome back to the winesellers.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023. There is that trophy that one of these women will be holding up in a few moments' time. A very important fifth frame here as the winner who wins this will be one more frame away from hoisting that trophy high above their head in victory and honor. So on you to break off. Here we go. So leveled up to 2-2. Two, two. Seems like a little bit of momentum shift now in Mink's direction after that last frame. Precisely, yeah. Like, she's now riding the wave. She's got to continue on that and just keep pressing and stuff like that because Anyi's mind's got to be swirling a little bit. She came out guns a-blazing, had a two-frame advantage. She was looking on her way, but then Mink kind of has rolled back, so uh, Anyi's game, game plan's got to be take this frame, stop the bleeding, put a stop to the momentum. Mm -hmm. As we've seen this before, actually. Quite famously enough, uh, back in the 2022 BC Open, Seattle's own very CCU took a very quick commanding 2 nothing lead over local player Max Warren, but then Max Ward back to take three frames to lead the match 3-2 in a best of seven. CC dug in and took the six to force to the cider, and then just uh, Max Warren just too strong for the Empire Billiards owner CCU mm -hmm. and Max Juan became champion so uh, unfortunately it doesn't look like it's going to happen this time Snooker 155 turning in all the way from Deutschland he was maybe predicting a 147 thank you for your kind words on the, the lovely trophy I think uh, the 147 would have been worth uh, more than a more than the first place prize, I guess. Right? So if you're in it for the money, I guess it depends on uh, what the priority would be. But I'm not sure if this frame is going to be a guaranteed opportunity. Oftentimes, you know, you'll ask most players that they want to take the frame win as opposed to getting the, the maximum. Well, as we all know, money comes and grows but the hardware will stay in your trophy case for eternity. Exactly. 22. Oh. Another, another uh, unexpected miss. Yeah, on you was really coming out in this frame. Wanted to stop the mink train. Unfortunately, it's a bit tricky now. You can't go uh, down to the business end of the table and clip off a red and come back to ball because you've got this red right here. But uh, I think mink is just pointing last that spot on the ball cushion that she wants to hit to roll and get behind the yellow. There's not a one of that cannon to the blue there. Yeah, looks like this red is on. It was pushed up table. Typically it's the only one that you would leave on when you're playing a safety like that. on the rail mm -hmm. and just beautifully placed on the black afterwards so as we've seen sometimes that pocket can uh, be a bit annoying in this final actually fortunate enough it's not a one pocket game there's five others but that top right has just been a bit of a pain for both players 
Dink on Yi a little bit straighter than she would have liked. Slightly hampered by this red means she's going to be playing a simpler forward rolling shot. Play for this lonesome red into the right middle. True T3, T4. You are correct. The standard is getting closer to the men's side. In fact, actually, Mink is on the main pro tour. Anya was on the tour, and I think that's why she came in really with a fighting attitude. She does want to get back on that tour. As well, Bex Kenna, who's Ox's sponsored player. She was in the booth last frame, and a couple frames ago, she's also on the pro tour. Yep, it's, uh, it's quite a great standard we're seeing with these two players, that's for sure. I think they would definitely give uh, most uh, men on the tour a run for their money. It's, important. It's, a, it's a precision game, I think Christian and I have discussed as well through mm -hmm. the broadcast this weekend that... Sure, maybe men, just because of their physique, they might just be able to have a bit more of a powerful shot. But if a powerful shot doesn't go in, it doesn't really help you. Mm -hmm. and if you can control that cue ball, that's what you want to do. And both these women have shown that they have great ability in doing that. Retreating to her case to get her extension. Players now have all the facets in that case from the telescopic extension, the mini butts. Some players even travel around with their own rest. Mm -hmm. so far, uh, far jump when it used to be. You have to trust that uh, the tables have uh, good owners and they can get you good equipment. And here we go, a tug of war. <laughs> Here's a first. <laughs> That's a classic view right there. Holy. <laughs> I hope Matt uh, caught that one on camera. <laughs> well, it's uh, good fun to see there is. Yeah, I think you were alluding to in our previous match, Christian, that that uh, just uh, suck on extension is just, uh, when it goes on the rest, there's just a real lot of pressure because it's very tight fit. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it's nice that uh, we can all sometimes see the lighter side. As sometimes it seems very serious there on the bays. Just gotta be get back in focus now. But it's cool to see some fun amongst the two players. Oh no, this is not a lucky split. There might be a chance for this red onto the into the left middle. I don't know. Don't think there was a touching ball. Is she gonna go for the one up into the corner or just nestle? Yeah, she's thinking about it, but it's close. Just yeah. don't want that push shot. A push shot is when, obviously, your cue ball and object ball are connected and the tip of the cue is still touching the cue ball. Yeah, I think this is really the only chance. And a bit of a natural safety if she gets behind the black. But a 52-point advantage in this fifth frame for An Yi. Yeah, puts her in the driver's seat. But still many, many, many points on the table there. Well, the black is open. Of course, the pink is a little up near the top of the bulk end of the table. This cuts it to the left middle, just left of the blue. But she's opting for the safety, maybe two cushions into the middle. Just want to tuck it tight. Oh my goodness. 
brilliant. Talk about a pot there. That might be part of the match so far. Granted, I guess that one other pot from on ye, or from uh, Mink in the previous frame down, down the left long rail was also pretty pretty high up there. Yeah, unfortunately, shot nicely on a color, but uh, take this green and get behind the brown. Could have gotten a little bit tighter, maybe, but still looks pretty safe. Is there a gap here to get into this red? Yeah, that's one thing that's just. Yeah, tough to see from our vantage point, from the cameras, even from our broadcast booth. Yeah, someone on YouTube says, watch out for a Bai Yulu from China. She's only 20 years old and absolute certainty to be the man in the main tour, so... Yeah, definitely look forward to seeing more from her. Maybe next year she'll come on. Yes, I think we'd love to have her and Mink as well at the young age of 22. There's a, a bright future ahead of her. But as we've seen, uh, it isn't always the youth game uh, on the pro circuit. There has been some men that are uh, getting up in their age in the 40s. Mm -hmm. Obviously that's not that old, but uh, they are still able to win some tournaments. So it's not a youth-driven game. Obviously when you get older, Things do deteriorate like your eyesight, but there is uh, equipment oh. out there that you can purchase to improve that. I think she might have gotten away with this one. That red that was running loose just managed to bump the one that was snookered by the blue. Might be a point here with the two reds right below the pink the yeah. only troublesome is is there's a little bit of distance between the two reds it's a natural escape though to go up to the bulk end I think she's going to take it as a two way oh she didn't run into that red so yeah would have would have sold a shot out probably but great plant there from on ye bit off that cushion but just has to focus on this because when she runs through she should have one of these reds to top left corner top right corner as she's able to get it it's going to prove very rewardful just rattling those draws once again the top right corner pocket strikes again so many tournaments that I've done you always find one pocket just really doesn't want to accept the ball, whether it's the top right or left, or one of the middle pockets, or a green or yellow pocket. One, one, one just has to be a little bit of a nuisance. Wow. Very nicely done there. 59 points, 58 point difference now. Imagine if uh, Mink is able to steal this frame away. Yeah, it would be huge if she was able to take that frame just a little bit long. I think she wants that. to be high though in the black, no? To get enough angle to come up table. She could end up low below it, I guess, too, but... This might not be as bad as it looks. 67 points and 53 in it, so it's definitely there for Mink. So she can get away with not... She doesn't need all blacks with the reds. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, excuse me, I thought she was on the black. That's my bad. Yeah, so definitely have to move the cue ball here, but... Not too bad. She's on the blue now, I realize. Yeah, you can stun down for these reds in the middle. A little bit, maybe. Just a little tight to the cushion there. She might have to jack up a little bit. She might use that cushion. Yeah, two rails and then go towards the line of aim. Nice shot there. Definitely very nice. Very natural. Short screw back to the black. Again, yeah, I wanted to run a bit more. Still pocketing the ball, cleaning the heart, just getting a little bit trickier than she wants in the positions. Not playing for blue or pink. Yeah, good puck. Nice recovery. Does this, this green? Cluster the red. What is she thinking about playing? What is she thinking about playing the screw shot if she has an angle screw off of the blue and behind the red on the right long rail? Looks like there might be, yeah, maybe a trace mm, maybe she just of prefers. angle. Yeah, I think there's a trace of angle for sure based on where her bridge hand is. She can screw back and take the mi mid range red to the right corner. So looks like what that's what she opted to do. 26. She did not get a dynamite red on down this rail, which was I think that red was kind of where the cue ball is now. But this has been her favorite pocket of the tournament, as we said earlier. Hmm. Something tells me that that's uh, now behind her, though, in terms of mentality. I don't think she's had. Much of a problem since. It doesn't have to do a lot to get onto the black. Very nicely done. Screw shot coming. Yeah, look at that stroke. And the slight side to send it up table. Thirty-four. Great shot. Twenty-five in it. Thirty-five on the table. Mm, she's got a stretch out on this one. Go get the extension. Looks like this red does go into the, to the green or the sorry the yellow pocket top left part of your screen so where we see her play for pink or blue next maybe even yellow it's like she's almost even got a mini mini butt actually it's the, mm. the size of her palm there usually uh, the mini butt's a few more inches than that maybe like a little three inch butt right big shot coming up here there's a safety on, but something tells me she's going to go offensive if it's there. And is it there? So now, does it need the points? 
necessarily, so definitely can opt to take yellow here. Seems like the brown's going to be the tricky one for her to get out in this frame steel. Blue is not too bad just because she's close to it. Definitely one that the pros will take on when they're nice and straight and about a bridge length away, so. Yeah, great pot. Now it's going to be all about the brown. Mm hmm. Probably just mapping it out as all these great players do. Three shots ahead, so she's seen obviously what she needs to do from yellow to green and then green to brown. Looking at her position. And then when it's time to take on the yellow, that's all she'll be focused on. Trust her technique. Trust that uh, she knows the sp right spot to where to put it. Her cue ball. Stunning this. Mm, does she have the angle to actually go into the brown here? If not, we'll definitely be able to get close and get exactly the type of angle she wants for, for the snooker. Yeah, she's looking to place her cue ball somewhere over here. So a break of 42, most likely ending with this green and probably playing the snooker on the brown. Just trying to figure out what angle she likes. She's where she wants to be. Don't know if the double. I don't think the double is on into the middle. Oh, well, she might be. No, I think she's queuing to play safe on the pink. That was the pace. That's okay. That incredible shot. Nicely done. Mm-hmm. So a good 45 break there by Ming to get her back into this very, very important fifth frame. Good contact, but it's going to leave a pot on, I think. Not going to settle in the bolt cushion, so... Great safety mm -hmm. from Mink. Might let her steal this frame. This would be a massive win. Saving Grace is uh, pink to black for Anyi. It's going to require some work from Mink. Watch out, cue ball. Looks good. It wasn't so much of an error from Anyi. She made great contact on that brown, but so difficult sometimes to get the right hit on the ball to not leave a shot. Oftentimes it comes down to randomness when it's that far. Done that nicely. Yeah, perfect. Got high on that pink. Natural angle is going to. Take her down to the black. She needs both, right? Mm-hmm. Just settle the nurse, Mink. One at a time. Where is John Virgo when you need him? That's right.
Definitely thought about it a little bit. Let's come off that cushion nicely here for a 3-2 advantage in this final the winesellers.com US Women's Snooker Open 2023 Championship. Oh, oh it rattled. No, but oh. doesn't leave a shot. Think she's okay. Wow. <laughs> makes that so many times nine out of a ten that's a shot that goes in for her but i guess that one the nerve sometimes the wow. pressure might have got to her drama indeed i thought she would shoot that at pace i was surprised the pace she shot it at holy so her second black ball frame but this one paramount in importance as opposed to the first one back in frame two Yeah, I'm not sure what it was, if it was the pressure or what. And I think she's not going to like this safety either. Yikes. It's got a chance for Anyi. This pocket has not been kind. Let's put it in at least with a bit of pace. Oh, another miss from Lan Yi. That pocket, that pocket. Oh, no. Looks like we're going to yeah. get a clean ball cleaning, I think. Yeah, not a bad idea. Just settle your nerves a little bit. Just really focus on what's going on. Even, mm -hmm. <laughs> even referee Dave Daly, just a little, getting a little nervous with the excitement there. Yeah, maybe, maybe I might have kicked. I'm not sure. I didn't really see or hear the contact, but... I have to go back and rewatch that shot. The one from Mink. I mean, uh, she did shoot it at that pace where a kick is kind of most uh, prevalent, you could say. You know, uh, kind of like that rolling follow speed. When you shoot that ball at pace, typically you're never going to see a kick. So I wonder, I wonder if that's why she's, you know, getting the cue ball cleaned and maybe just a mental reset as well. Black is fairly potable for either of these two, so. And there's there. And it's out of there. Wow. What a steal there. Anya came out. Guns a-blazing in that fifth frame. Looks like she might have taken the advantage, but Mink came back with a great 45 break and just hung in there, and she takes that fifth frame. So she leads 3-2 to two in this best-of-seven final at the WineCellars.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023. And as always do, when we are on the verge of a champion to be crowned, we'd like to go around and give a good thanks to all the people that helped us out where else to start but mandy fisher who has done so much for the women's game is the president of the head of wws it's just fantastic what she's doing and building up the standard of all these great players as well diana schuler and matt Hewitt have come over here and run a fantastic tournament they did a wonderful job last year we're great to have them again doing all their strong work they're unseen but their hard work and dedication is completely admirable jason and diana miller at winesellers.com what can we say but thank you thank you so much for your support and sponsorship throughout this tournament Lipman lights joshua yoon sarah Can sarah sarah three count thank you Popperi. Thank you for your sponsorship there. And Dave Daly, our TV referee, who has been working tirelessly all weekend long, has just done a great job, as well as Vinit Desani, Adam Horacek, Horacek? Yeah, Horacek. Horacek, uh, doing the roving referee, as, long, as well as Mike uh, Dominguez. He has been doing some rover refereeing abilities as well. Jamie Miller here at Ox has been taking care of us, making sure we're fed and well quenched with 
Thirst. Really appreciate that. And all the guests that came into the booth provided some insight, gave us a little tidbit of their story. Kathleen Stanley, Corinne Lyson, Diana Schuler was in here as well as tournament director talking about that. We had a nice little conversation with An Yi and as well with Mink Nutcherat. A little bit of a language barrier there, but they definitely uh, got through it and we had some good laughs and some good fun. Marianne McConnell coming from Canada after a long absence away from the tour. A 1984 runner-up in the World Championship Final. Francis Chow, Bex Kenner and Jamie Hunter, last year's champion in the booth. And what can we say about Christian Youngers? He's been a great tech whiz there, providing wonderful pictures for everybody, scorekeeping, just keeping everything looking sharp, sounding smart throughout the entire broadcast. And Mike Dominguez, the owner-operator Herox, has really brought Snooker to the Pacific Northwest here in Seattle. And it just keeps growing and growing from just a, a little company that he had called Bays. Some of us remember that down in Pioneer Square. Unfortunately, the pandemic hit and he was forced to reconvene, but Mike took it on his chin, but then he rebounded brilliantly and created Ox, which is a fantastic room. If you're in the Seattle area, definitely come down and check it out. And all of you fans throughout the entire weekend, where would we be without all of you tuning in worldwide giving us your thoughts your questions your comments it's just been absolutely fantastic the numbers have been going through the roof as i look at it right now through our streams on twitch yeah youtube and facebook we're nearing 600 views for this final so thank you thank you very much you are helping this great game of snooker to continue to grow let's see can mink or on ye force a decider or will mink take the championship in the sixth frame and thank you to David Burney for coming down from Canada. Lead commentator, doing the business. Great job, Dave. Thank you, thank you, guys. Always make me feel at home. I don't feel like a visitor here. I just feel like another member of the family. Yep. Yeah, just addressing some comments in chat. Looks like uh, they were going to swap the balls, but decided not to. So they're still playing with the same ball set. Just wanted to get clean cue ball out there. So... No change of balls. Yeah, maybe uh, can find out what uh, what happened with that idea. What was I never really seen a switch of balls mid match. Yeah, I think they just wanted to get a clean set out there since it looks like maybe that could have been a kick at the end there. But I think uh, they're going to continue to play with the same set. No sense in changing it. The players are attuned to the weight and speed of this ball set, so. Touching ball. But a little clip off here. Should send this cue ball back to bulk. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> no raise the hand as uh, Anya apologizes for that rather fortuitous flick off the brown to create a snooker behind the yellow. This is in, we are here at Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington, for those who are asking. Remind us of what the prize payout is, Dave. The prize payout for first place is $3,500, second place is $2,250. I believe the two semifinalists get 1000 Maybe the four quarter finalists might get 500. Not too sure on that. I think there might be a list up on snookerscores.net. Mm -hmm. See that every day. Wow, that was a oh yeah interesting shot there by Yan Yi. The floating bridge. I think it was a touching ball, so didn't want to risk touching any of the reds. Yeah, Snooker 155 called it. That was a fluker by Yan Yi a few shots ago to get behind the yellow. For those of you who haven't heard. We're coining the new term, fluker, the fluked snooker. Don't count around on this one. I've seen that pot go in multiple times in this tournament, so... Let me just 
just have to settle down. That was only just one frame, that last one. It's a whole new ball game here. It might just be a little bit more tense in her arm, as she knows, like, one maybe silly mistake could cost her. It definitely uh, didn't come out of the gates, as you would expect. It's trailing 2 nothing, but there's 1-3 on the bounce. There definitely had to be mindful of the in off when you're flicking off that red and going near one of those top corner pockets. Some folks asking if there's uh, many snooker enthusiasts in the US. Well, you're definitely going to find some here over at Ox Billiards in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Yeah, there's definitely pockets. Our good friend Romil has a great academy down in Arizona, I think just outside of the Phoenix area. And there's another gentleman that can't really mind his name because this drama has been so gripping, but he uh, runs an academy in Nashville. And there's the New York Athletic Club. Our good friend Mike Dominguez actually has uh, gone there to help out because Ahmad Ali, who's the house pro there, is on the pro circuit right now. Mm -hmm. And that's really going to help uh, the game grow in America. Definitely when you can see one of your own country people excelling or at least playing a game, uh, it's going to be tough for uh, Ahmad. It's, I think he was a, a big fish in a small pond over here, and now he's a little fish in a big pond over there. And no disrespect to Ahmad, he's a great, fantastic player. It's just the caliber over in the UK. Yep. Uh, they just have the facilities. And the numbers. Uh, the numbers, they foster it. Uh, they have such the rich history. They even have it, you know, some of the schools have it in their curriculum, so. That would be fun to play snooker in school. So Anyi once again coming out strong out of the gate in the frame. Needs to keep this going. Feels to me like she's also kind of sped up her routine, it looks like. Her pre and post shot routine. She's kind of playing a little bit quicker than earlier. I mean, she's kind of trying to get the momentum back on her side. Knows that she needs to get back in this match. Started off quite strong. But let has let Meek back in this match. going to be this tournament is I think they've had uh, about 15 competitors. Some knew each other from last year's tournament, but there was also some new faces. But, you know, quickly all these women became great friends off the table. And they're going to look forward to seeing each other in the future, sharing some great stories. So really, really nice to see. Mm. 
Mm, good pot there. Has this red. Just the right angle to come back down for the black. Just can look kind of looking more forward into the frame as well, seeing if any of these reds go in the, in the pack into the right middle. Looks tricky. Yeah, folks, I mean, it's actually maybe not a part of the curriculum in the UK, although it might feel like it because of all the rich history, but uh, a lot of up-and-coming stuff. Yep, someone mentioned Luca Brussel, the Belgian bullet. He was here in Seattle not too long ago, last weekend, for an exhibition. Amazing, amazing cuist. Yes, uh, someone on the chat is mentioning about that uh, it would be nice to get more of this going in the U.S. And uh, with it not being in the Olympics, it does face some hurdles. So that is, that would be a huge win for the game of snooker if it can be in the Olympics because then it's on the global stage. It would get publicity. People would be able to see it see what uh, different countries can perform on it so uh, when we get close to Olympic bid time ring up your local IOC member and plead, beg blackmail them, I don't know whatever you gotta wow. do to try and get uh, snooker in the Olympics wow, amazing shot into the left middle there is bringing the heat now. 24. Trying to capitalize maximum points against Arnie in this mistake. I oh guess yeah, some folks mentioning Neil Robertson, the best Q action in the game. That's what Ronnie will tell you. And yeah, I believe that. What I find most interesting about Neil Robertson's game is how he kind of turns his head to kind of make his dominant eye like right over the queue in the line of the line of shot pretty interesting bit of a high black but should be okay for her the, there's a red on in the middle of this bunch should definitely be playing for it next There's that kind of diagonal line of the four and then the two. And I think the second one from the top of that four should go in to this top left corner pocket. Yeah, probably playing for this guy. Next, I imagine. Oh, she decided to go into the bunch. 32. Now he's going to take this up into the green pocket, it looks like. It was fairly natural that high ball run into the pack. So I guess didn't fancy that red. It's going to take her a little bit more to the right part of the table, so... Should be fine to get on the black here, just has to focus on the pot. Amazing pot after amazing pot for Mink. Mm -hmm. Playing snooker with purpose. Right, we're probably going to be playing for this area right here. I imagine. Shoot the red down to the right corner. Also has an option for a red to the right middle. Yeah, she's so good at those little stun shots. 
Getting a little close to this red. In the left long rail, so going to be a little bit elevated on the queuing, but if she has the right angle, she can just float this down. I think she's going to have to stun over, actually. Yeah, nice pot. Hey, Canadian Snicker Academy. Thank you, thank you. Now I think the cluster opens up, right? Yeah, she can take this high red. Just seeing if that red below it will go into the top left corner pocket after she takes this red. Potentially pink or blue. Hey Chuck, thanks for the nice comment. If you guys do like the stream, like and subscribe and share it out. This match isn't over yet. It's in Mink's hands and uh, that's what any athlete wants when they want a chance to win. They want to have uh, the ownership of it. your opponent give you the victory you have to earn it yourself in this game of snooker wow what a pot Ooh, very nice eye I did not see that one in the middle that, that really opens things up for her too oh I thought that's what you, yeah I thought that was that's the one you were talking about that True, opens up the cluster right yeah I thought she was going to go for maybe for the high one didn't know that, that went through but uh, she's been making that in the middle all day and she's got the best eyesight that's for sure we're up in the broadcast booth. She's right down on the table. It's on a break of 56. After the first real opportunity in this frame. A quick start from on Yi, 20 break. It's going to be tricky, though. These two red don't really go into either corner pocket that are just above the black. Yeah, it looks like these guys are going to have to get cannon into them at some point. Granted, one of them, they both go up in the top left corner pocket. Or, sorry, left corner by the bulk end, the yellow pocket. Oh, wow. That was the shot that she just had made. Ooh, another twist in this frame. Drama. Fortunately for her, she leaves pretty tough shots. A long pot up into the green. That's what she likes. Blue and pink available. Or any of the bulk colors. Ooh, didn't want to cannon that green there, I don't think. Would have liked to come past it and shoot the green in the same pocket based on that key ball path. Yeah, stuck 155. It's a good opportunity for the century prize there, I think, from Mink, but alas, called it too soon. We'll call it uh, a chat curse in the case, instead of the commentator's curse. How about that? <laughs> Roll up off of one cushion. Very nicely done. So 35 points in it and 59 on the table. Thank you, Bike Garrett. We're on YouTube. It's going to play to open up these two balls. Yeah, it looks like it. Did, did a good job to not leave anything easy. Pressure is definitely on on you here. 
35 point difference. A few of the Reds are pushed safe. It's going to be a tough one to steal, but just got to take the points that are at least available pretty soon. Oh, she likes this brown, though. It's in a good spot for a snooker. Very nicely done. Tap on the table from our opponent. Yeah, as we heard from Onyu when she was in the booth, her focus is taking one shot at a time. Oh, sorry about that. Still leaving tough pots. Yeah, Candy's Corner, if you want to send us a message, we can follow up with that. Ooh, it's came a little bit short here. I don't think this red passes into the right corner pocket. Might have a thin cut into the right middle. Or do you play the safety to help cluster this this red down by the black? I have a feeling Mink's going to want to clear the kill this frame off, so she might go for the offensive option. Yeah, she'll be weighing all of her options there. Obviously, she'd like to get this frame done and dusted to take the championship doesn't really want to force a decider because sometimes in a decider all you need is one chance wow that red was on incredible incredible stuff yeah her long potting has really turned around as the tournament has grown on you can go ahead email at uh, christian at ox billiards That email, Christian at oxbilliards.com for info about the cameras. Wow. Oh, she's checking the score, it looks like. How many reds needed for a frame ball? Snooker's required situation. Looks like 36, the difference. She could win it here. Just trying to figure out if she needs only this red, and I believe it will be enough. Came a little bit short of pace, though. Yeah, this red goes down. Should be ahead by 44, mm -hmm. and 43 will be on the table. She'll also be on a colored, so. I believe she wants to make. Another color at least, though, because you better believe Anya will be coming back to the table if there's only one point needed. I don't know if she's going to get the chance here. Very nicely done. Great shot. Close down. Good angle on this red. It's a blind cut. It's a tricky, tricky pot, but the natural angle will take her onto the black. If she pots, pots this, surely would be end of the match. Yeah, I and think there's if you a are looking at your winesellers.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Champion of 2023 right here. Amazing, amazing shots. Mm -hmm. Wow. Come on, Mink. Let's see you run the table. It's going to be tricky. 22. The double's on. A little bit of hampered queuing. Ain't no thing. Oh, just gets a good game. There's the extension right there. Can you believe it? Mink Metcharot is your wine sellers.com 
U.S. Women's Snooker Open Champion of 2023. What a battle she fought hard. She was up against it and he came out with two frames out of the gate. But Mink Duggan bounced back and won four on the spin to take the title. Take a bow, young lady. You are the champion this weekend. That's a great tournament to add to your resume. And we are going to just probably run a little commercial break, but we're going to stick around because there will be a trophy presentation. So hold on to the stream, everybody. You will see that lovely trophy there being raised over Mink's head in jubilation. Well done, Mink. Stand by, everybody. The trophy presentation will be coming up shortly. Thanks everyone in the chat. We're going to get a little bit prepped here. We're doing a quick trophy presentation. If you guys want to stick around and watch, it will be a fun time. Don't go anywhere.
All right, everybody. Can you hear me in the back? Can you hear me in the front? What a championship we just had all week. Thank you very much, everyone. 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 Thank you very much,
to get used to the jet lag. But uh, we've been to um, the Space Needle, which I, I think is amazing. So I think Ming, you should go there. <laughs> and what else? And the Pipe Place Market. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the restaurant Crab Pot. <laughs> yeah. And of course, this pub. All right, and the player of the weekend, let's welcome the champion of the 2023 U.S. Women's Snooker Open, Mink. <laughs> Here you go, Mink. So, Ming, um, I've been wanting to ask you this since, uh, what, day two? Were, were you really gunning for that high break? Did you see it happening before? <laughs> I, I, I tried to clear that time, but, yeah, I'm very excited when, when I play that shot. Nothing against Ani, but we were all rooting for an amazing break, and it was. It, I loved how you kept trying that shot after. <laughs> I think you tried that. <laughs> so, how was your time in Seattle? Yeah, I, I, I very exciting and very happy for come here. It's my first time in USA, and yeah, I, I not go outside because <laughs> I, I practice and go to hotel. Yeah, but I think. Uh, tomorrow, I, I try to go to look Seattle City, yeah. And, and one final question. We won't mention the name of the restaurant because uh, hopefully there'll be a um, sponsor next year. <laughs> but did you find the Thai food very good in Seattle? Yeah, I always like Thai food. Um, <laughs> I go eat Thai food every day, <laughs> yeah. Once again, it was a pleasure having you here at Ox. Thank you so much for coming, and congratulations.
Anyone else like a photograph with me? Anybody want to? Sure. Yeah. Anybody want to picture with me? Yeah. Both? <laughs>